Hello, everybody of Helping the Homeless and Restoration Church. This is Wednesday's Word with Pastor Wendy. I'm streaming from this page because I wanted to talk about vision and how even Noah had to wait. And for all of you who have been following us for a number of years, you know that we've been speaking about a vision that we have for Helping the Homeless, for camp restoration. And also part of that vision is Restoration Church. Most of you know we have a mobile church and an online church. We have about 2,000 or so of you who watch our sermons every week, and you are just as much of the church as those who physically come to our building where we meet every Sunday morning. And we love you, and you are part of this. You are part of us. The body is spread out in different areas, but there's only one body. Amen. And so one thing that I just am so excited about is through this evening's message, we're going to talk about different saints in the Bible who had to wait for their vision to come to fruition. And even Noah had to wait. Amen. So we're going to talk about the vision. We're going to talk about scriptures say about vision. We're going to talk about how it's normal to have to wait on God's timing and we also want to launch a pledge drive for helping the homeless because to get to the next step we're going to need every single one of you to do something and be part of this we need more prayer than ever before we need more volunteers although we are super super blessed with over 150 volunteers that are amazing we're going to need more bus drivers to get this food bus out and about on a regular weekly basis uh, we're going to need more dollars coming in, so we're going to talk about that tonight. But I want to speak first the Word of God, so let's just stop, pause, and pray. Amen? Stop, pause, and pray. Heavenly Father, we just honor your presence. We thank you that you are God. You are our Creator. You are our ever-present help in time of need, and we always need you. You are our teacher. You are our advocate. You are our helper. You are our standby. You are our strength. You are our healer. Lord, every need that we have, the answer is found in Jesus, in you. And Lord, we come before you tonight. Lord, I just pray and thank you for your anointing to come upon me, to be your oracle, to be your mouthpiece, to be your spokesperson, for your message for the people to come through me to them. It's you speaking, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding me and giving me your direction and your word. And Father, I just empty myself of me and I say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Bring those to this message who need to hear it. And Lord, may you be glorified in everything that's said and done. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to start this evening with Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're going to read verses... Um, two through four it says here and the lord answered me write the vision make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it for still the vision awaits its appointed time it hastens to the end and it will not lie if it seems slow wait for it it will surely come and it will not delay Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright with him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. Amen. So there's a lot we can learn in this passage. We know that it's important to write the vision down and to keep it before us, to keep speaking the vision. And in 2012, the Lord gave me a vision. Actually, it was through a dream. I went to bed, my husband and I, and through that evening while I was sound asleep, the Lord visited me in a dream. And he told me that through Helping the Homeless Ministry, we will be camp restoration and we will have a church, a worship center. He told me I was supposed to go to full-time Bible school, which at that time I had just started Bible school. As you can see behind me, I attended all four years. I graduated and I've since then become ordained with AFCM. And I'm so thankful for the teaching and the foundation of faith that began in my life in 1975 through a Nawana program at Denby Baptist Church where I received Jesus as my Savior. And you know, even through these years, 
there is always a call in my life to teach the word and to minister to people, salvation, and to pastor to people. At different churches we were at, it was not okay for women to be pastors. But we know the word of God says there is neither Greek nor Jew, male nor female. We are all one in the body of Christ. We are equally made in the image of God, male and female. He created us to be part of the body of Christ. So I'm thankful for the truth of God's word. I'm thankful for being able to answer the, the call of God. And now to be ordained so I can fulfill the call that God has on my life and on my husband's life. So as you know, we've launched Restoration Church last, last month. And we started right here in this living room. And we outgrew it. So the last month we've been assembling at the Whitcomb Lodge at Beaver Dam Park. And through that, through the Whitcomb Lodge at Beaver Dam Park, we've been meeting every week. And we've been live streaming like I am right now. I've been doing Wednesday's Word with Pastor Wendy for over six months for all of you to join in and have the Word of God for teaching and discipling throughout week to week. And on Fridays, about three, three and a half months ago, we started Friday's Fun Message for the children, which I love. I just love talking to those little ones and teaching. And I've learned from many of the adults that you love Friday's fun because you're learning as well. A lot of you like me, you were not brought, you were not brought up in church. You did not start going to Sunday school when you were a little child like some of them that are blessed to do. So some of the Bible stories that many take for granted knowing, a lot of you don't know. So this is a way to learn and we all have to start somewhere. There's no shame in not knowing. The shame, possibly, if you want to call it shame, although God never condemns or shames us, is if we stay ignorant and we never learn. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, we perish for lack of knowledge. So part of what we do through this teaching online is to help bring the word alive to you. So if you can't come to a church, we bring church to you. You are part of the church. You are equally valued and just as important to someone who goes to a building because the church is not a destination. The church is not a building. The church is the body of Christ. Amen. So to get back to why I'm streaming on the Helping the Homeless page instead of Restoration Church, we will share it on Restoration Church and we will share it on our YouTube channel just like we do every single message. But the beautiful thing is you guys are been part of us, carrying us, praying with us, watching God unfold this ministry from the very beginning. Since 2010, we have been a church family. We have been assembling together, growing together, learning together. We've gone through so many different life changes together. Those of you who watched my message last night, it was an eight year anniversary of a tragic accident that my family was involved in. But God is so good and faithful. He restored our daughter from death to life and he healed the injuries in my neck and my back. My husband's injuries were healed, but more our daughter who stopped breathing by the word of God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, she came back to life. And God is the resurrector, amen? And so all of us have tests and trials. And some of you might have had a loss in your family or a new life in your family. There might be a new baby born in your family over the last 10 years or the last nine years. People have gotten married. People have started new jobs, new careers. Or like me, you've been called into full-time ministry and you sold your business. There's so many great things that are happening in our lives. You know what? Our pastor that we've been under for the last 13 years, taught us well is actually I've learned this was not his original phrase but it's one that we've learned well it's actually a John Maxwell leadership phrase everything rises and falls on leadership and so as we grow growth without change is impossible you know when we're born as brand new babies we don't stay that way we grow we develop we increase in size and age and stature and knowledge so we're never supposed to stay where we're at we're supposed to keep growing and learning so praise god for that praise god for this ministry we praise god for you being part of what god is doing in and through us you may not be here in gloucester county but you're still part of the body of christ you're still ones that share our Facebook page and help pray for those who are lost or homeless or in poverty. And God doesn't want 
people to stay that way. He wants them to be discipled. He told us when we're born again to go ye. Go ye and make disciples. Don't stay where you're at. Go ye. And that's actually part of Restoration Church's mission statement. It's go ye, love God, and serve people. And that's at the core of who we are as Christians. That's the core of who we are as Restoration Church. And that's the core of what we do with helping the homeless. So I'm getting back into this because, you know, there's many examples in the Bible about people God had wait for their vision to come. Forgive me for looking down because I need to be able to read this. Uh, Jesus himself, he had to wait until he was 30 years old before God had him baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit with power and anointed him with that power to go for three and a half years in his ministry before he went to the cross and he saved us. He died in our place. He had to wait 30 years of his life. The first 30 years of his life, he had to wait. So, you know, if we have to wait, it's been for us 2010 or 2019 now, so it's been nine years for this ministry, but it's been from 2012 until now. So that's what, seven years that we've had to wait for this ministry to come, for the vision to come to fruition, and it is. Camp restoration is coming. Somebody somewhere has a campground, an acreage that we're gonna acquire. I just know that by my spirit because the Holy Spirit told us it is coming. He said 2019 is the year of preparation and 2020 is the year, prep, uh, the year the vision comes to fruition. The vision for us is Camp Restoration and Restoration Church, part of helping the homeless. God doesn't want us to stay stuck where we're at. He wants us to be restored. He wants us to be redeemed. He wants us to be developed. He wants us to be discipled. We can't stay stuck guys. We can't. That's not good. You can't just fall and not get up. You've got to get back up. God has so much planned for your life, for my life. He has a good plan for each one of us. And we are all, if we're born again believers, we're all part of the body of Christ. We all are part of the puzzle. Each one of us is critical and crucial to the ultimate plan of God. So we're not supposed to try to be like someone else. We just need to be who God created us to be. And we need to go about doing what he's called us to do. So I'm focused on the vision because he gave me this vision. Camp restoration will be a campground type facility that we will live at 24 seven. We will sell this home and we will move there and we will live with the people who come as residents. Camp restoration will be a place like a campground with cabins for residents to live in, homeless people, and people who are struggling with extreme poverty and they have no way out. We want to bear your burden. We as the church need to bear each other's burdens. Amen. The Bible says so in Galatians 6, to bear ye one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. It's so, so important not to leave people stuck, but to help them up. We don't want to just give hands out. We don't want to just be a shelter for people to come and stay overnight and then go home or get back sorry they're homeless get back out on the streets that's not helping them it's helping them temporarily but it's not helping them get to who god wants them to be that's the discipleship picture the part of the puzzle that's missing so camp restoration will be a center that people come for 12 months who are eligible and qualify and they will live with us at the camp for 12 months they will go through a process. They will help us with gardens. We would have raised bed gardens where we raise food to eat, to can, to freeze, and also to sell. So they would be literally working in the dirt with me and my husband. Part of the maintenance of living there will be working there. They would be part of a um, foundation of faith program to learn what happened when they got born again what happened when they got saved what that really means based on the bible and to learn their identity based on who the bible says they are many people might have said the prayer of salvation when they were a child or they were water baptized as a child but they have no idea what's in god's word they don't know what it says they don't understand it they haven't been taught therefore they can't live right you know if you're taught wrong you're going to live wrong but if you're taught right, you can live right. And we want to live right based on the God, God's word. So that's part of the process is studying the word, learning the word, being discipled, working, 
We also will help teach them how to manage their money God's way. Learning how to budget and to put God's God first, his kingdom first is all part of this program. Learning how to not be angry with one another and to hold on to wrongs that were done. Letting those things go and walking in love. It's a process, but it's the Bible. It's doing life God's way. Learning job skills. We're going to have several businesses that we will operate through camp restoration. So people will come in and they'll have actual work to do while they live there rent free, not having to worry about the burden of how are they gonna afford this and that. That's part of the problem. They don't have the job skills to sustain them. We're gonna help teach them those job skills. And we're gonna be part of a family. We're gonna have Bible study every day. We're gonna have church services twice a week. We're gonna have mentoring one-on-one. -on -one. And we're gonna help people get unstuck. Is that something that you wanna be part of? You can, and you are, if you follow us through this page, through the support financially you give, that's part of what we're gonna do. Now, we've started a fund a couple years ago for camp restoration, and I'm thankful that it's slowly increasing, but we need to get it from here to way up here. There's several places that we would like to purchase, but we don't wanna go into debt. We wanna be able to use the funds that we've saved and more that's coming in so we can purchase it or even better have another nonprofit donate that to us so we can have the location free part of what we're going to do and we're so excited is to have equine therapy rehab we have a doctorate on our board who is a doctorate of psychology who has experience in leading these types of things and some of you know me from way on back you know we are horse people we've had horses we showed horses we trained horses we had a horse farm until our youngest one was born and then we no longer have had horses but we're going to get horses again we're going to have that therapy through the horses which there's something special that happens through a horse and carrying a horse and grooming a horse and learning to ride and trust again so we're going to have that as part of our business philosophy it's all part of the big vision. We're going to have fruit trees like I have here, but many, many more. Right now we have blueberries, we have fig trees, um, we have strawberries, and we've had an abundant harvest this year, but we also have had gardens. I'm still pulling in cucumbers, green beans, green peppers, blueberries, and figs that we've been saving and eating and giving out to the people. But at Camp Restoration, we'll have much more fresh vegetables. Some will be sold, some will be harvested that we will live off of. We also will have chickens. Right now we have two chickens and we have fresh eggs every day. And some of you have been such a blessing of donating your eggs to helping the homeless. But we plan on having a lot more eggs so we can have fresh organic eggs. So these are just some of the plans that the Lord has given us for camp restoration. But we want to launch that pledge drive and get your commitment to be part of helping us get to that next stage in ministry. Jesus waited 30 years. We talked about that. He had to wait another 40 days after he was crucified before he ascended to Father God from the grave. He was raised to life. Just like he said, three days he was in that tomb. His soul descended into the lowest parts of the hell and he battled the enemy and he won victorious and he took back the keys of the kingdom and he rose victoriously from that grave, defeated death. And now he had to wait 40 days before he can finish and go to Father God. So waiting is part of the Christian life. Moses, he was in the desert for 40 years before he was sent in by God to rescue the children of Israel from the Egyptians. He had to wait 40 years. I'm 53 years old. Can you imagine if I had to wait another 40 years before Camp Restoration came? I believe there's too many people who are homeless right now and stuck in poverty right now who needs Camp Restoration, who need the Word of God, who need to be restored. We don't wanna wait 40 years. God said, 2020 is the year the vision comes to fruition. It says the Israelites had to wait 430 years before God delivered them from the Egyptians. And David, David had to wait 13 years before he became king of Israel. And Abraham, he was an old man when he and Sarah 
had Isaac. They had to wait 25 years for the birth of their son Isaac after God gave them the promise that he would be the father of many, of all the descendants, of as many stars as you can see, as many kernels of sand in the, in the ocean. He would be father of that many children through his seed, Isaac. He had to wait 25 years for that. The apostles had to wait 10 days after Jesus ascended to heaven before they received the gift of the Father, the Holy Spirit in the upper room. And Noah, Noah had to wait 120 years from the time God told him to build the ark until the time the flood actually occurred. And you know, Noah, he, like many of these others I said and shared, he believed God. When God spoke to him and gave him a word, he was absolutely convinced something called a flood and something called rain was going to happen. There's never been a flood prior to that. And there wasn't that much rain before. He had to be obedient to what God said. And as God instructed him how to build the ark, some people thought it was gonna be little. It was massive. My husband and I, a couple years ago, went and saw the actual art that was fabric re, re, re manufactured based on the scriptures in Kentucky. It's amazing. It's humongous. And you know, it's not just a little boat. It's huge. Jesus is like the ark. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to Father God except through him. And Noah and his wife and his sons were saved. And all of the animals, two of every species, went on the ark to preserve and save them. They were a remnant. Noah was found pure and righteous. All the rest were corrupt with unholy living, such ugly, disgusting sins that they were involved in. And it hurt the heart of God, where God says that he was almost saddened for creating man. But Noah and his wife and his children were pure and righteous, so he saved them. And he told them, sorry about that. He told them to build this ark when no one really knew what a flood and rain was. He was preparing them to do what God said is coming. And so just like that, God gave me this vision. And he said, helping the homeless will be camp restoration and restoration church. Helping the homeless will be a place for people to come and get their lives reset by the word of God and live for 12 months. Those who've been homeless or struggling in extreme poverty will have a place to be restored, to live for a year free so they don't have to worry about struggling anymore. And then they can learn more about God and build their relationship with Jesus Christ based on the word of God. They'll learn job skills. They'll learn to save and budget their money and how to put God first through tithing. So this is what God said. This is the vision. We've had this vision for seven years. And sometimes when we wait for a year for something to come to pass, we get impatient. We are in the instant I want it now society and generation. Some of us, when we're hungry, we don't want to take the time to prepare our food. So instead, we'll run up to, hello, 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 everybody. We'll run to an instant fast food place to purchase food, which is not always healthy for our bodies, but we're hungry and we become impatient. We need to learn to wait for things of God to come. And we have been waiting for seven years. And many people don't believe that helping the homeless camp restoration will come to pass. But let me tell you something, it's coming because God said it's coming. And when God gives you a word, it doesn't matter what other people say. I heard him. I was in that vision. He took me in that dream. I was part of it and he spoke it to me, okay? So I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And I know that God will use the body of Christ to help this come to pass because there's too many people who are trapped in poverty and trapped in homelessness who need to find their identity in Jesus, find their value in the love of God, their worth, their, oh, their, to find out how cherished and precious they are. 
That's what camp restoration is going to be all about. That's what helping the homeless ministry is all about. And that is what restoration church is all about. It is coming. When God told me last year, last year, he said two words in my prayer time. At the time, I still owned a business. He said, it's time. He said, it's time. For four months, I did not know specifically what he meant by it's time. I didn't know if he was meaning the ministry was about to explode because I did actually have somebody stop by my office. And let me just find that here because I, I keep things like this written down. Help me find it, Lord. I write them in my Bible or I'll, if someone gives me a piece of paper with a note on here, right here. Do you see that? I have it written down. This was a man named Jay Noel, November 10th, 2010. He came, he was from Lansing, Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. And he came here to live in Virginia Beach. And here I am, I was in my office in New Kent, down Route 249 in a rural, rural road. And he came and knocked on my door and he came upstairs with his wife. And he said, the Lord sent me here. He said, I have a message for you from the Holy Ghost. He said, let me write, read it on the back. He said prophetically that your business and the ministry God has given you a vision for is about to explode. This was November 10th of 2014. Now he said, do you believe in praying in tongues? And I said, absolutely, I do. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, my wife and I, can we pray with you right now? Is it okay if we lay hands on you? I did not know him, but I got an okay from the Spirit. Let me just say, it's not wise to let someone you don't know just lay hands on you because you don't know the Spirit behind them. But I knew by the Holy Spirit that he was the real deal. He knew about my ministry. He knew about the vision, and we never even spoke against it, about it. So I, he laid hands on me, and we prayed right there in, in my office. And he prayed a powerful prayer. We prayed in tongues. And it was just the presence of God was so strong right then and there. That's all I could tell you. It was real. You know, when the Holy Spirit sends somebody from Lansing, Michigan, all the way here to New Kent to knock on your door and say your vision and ministry that the Lord's given you is about to explode, you take notice to that. I wrote it down. And I just knew this. And then March 11th, 2017, Pastor Andrew of Tanzania, who I love. He's my father in ministry there in Tanzania. He is our brother in Christ. We help support his ministry. He said to us when I was there preaching, I stayed with them for several weeks in their home. And he said, the moment I step back on United States soil, the status of my ministry will instantly change as a result of ministry in Africa for five weeks. I learned so much when I was in Africa. I learned so much from the people in Uganda and South Africa and the people in Tanzania. They are our people. And then since then, we got connected to another beautiful husband and wife pastor team, Pastor Jolly and Charles of Rwanda, who we also partner and minister with now. You know, when you go into rural villages of people in extreme poverty there who love the Lord and they will walk for hours to come and worship together, that does something to you. They're not so focused on material things. They're happy to be alive. They're happy to come together and they get on their knees for hours and they pray and they cry out to God and they worship in buildings that are not really buildings. They're not even fully built, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if five people are there. It doesn't matter if 10 people are there. They come together as the body of Christ with their whole heart and it's just done so much to my husband and I and we have been so blessed to be there we've seen people delivered of demonic spirits we've seen people healed miraculously and I'll be sharing more and more about some of these miracles through our series faith and miracles on restoration church page but I'm just telling you we've been blessed so pastor Andrew gave me this word he said, when we got back, this was March of 2017, when I stepped back onto United States soil, this instant status of our ministry is going to change as a result of ministering in Africa in five years. And you know what? We have been seeing that. It's been supernatural. The provision that's coming into this ministry from so many sources and bodies and churches, cross-denominational ties, this 
the Catholic Church, the Methodist Church, the Episcopalian Church, the Baptist Church. There's so many. Full Gospel, Church of God, there's so many. It doesn't matter the denomination. It's the body of Christ wanting to help one another. And that's what we are called to do, is to help and love one another. Oh my goodness, praise the Lord. And there's many others. He told me also another trip in September. We went back to Tanzania. And he said today in the spirit realm that I have been raised to a new level and new doors for ministry will open to preach in many countries. And that has also happened since that word has been spoken over me. And then the Lord also sent a sister, Tammy Steers. Oh my. This was October 13, 2016. She contacted me and said the Lord told her in her prayer time. She said, God told me to tell you that you, Wendy, will be responsible for an Azuzu Street-like revival. We've had so many crusades in Africa where thousands, literally thousands, have come to Christ. When I went through the Joyce Myers Ministries to South Africa and Uganda, we had thousands, I'm talking thousands of people come to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we had thousands who came who received miraculous healings. Jesus is still the same. He goes about healing all. He went about teaching and preaching and healing all who were oppressed by the enemy. He's still the same yesterday, today, and will be forever. If he was healing people then and doing miracles then, he's still the same and he's still doing it now. My life is a miracle. He healed me, he delivered me, he saved me, and he set me free. He rose our daughter from death to life and completely restored her to, hit, to perfect health. I've seen so many miracles, and we will be sharing more and more through our series, Faith and Miracles. But the thing is, it's a word of God. It's Jesus, it's our faith in him. No human can do any miracle. I can't do any miracle. I'm just the same as anyone else except the Holy Spirit lives in me and the anointing of God is upon me. He gives me the power to be his witness and he works through me. It's him, not me, whenever anyone receives a miracle healing or deliverance or salvation. I'm just his hands and his feet, as are all believers. We're called to do this as believers. So I know when God speaks to me, I hear him. I'm his sheep. I know his voice. A voice of a stranger I will not heed. It does not matter if someone else sitting up in this pulpit or that pulpit or in their living room or in a big business doesn't believe what I say because I'm not here to please man. I'm here only to please God. It's only through faith that we can please God. And Galatians 1.10 says, who are you trying to please, man or God? Well, I can tell you, for me, I'm not a man pleaser. I am a God pleaser. I strive to please my heavenly father. And I pray that you are the same. So when God gives me a word like he gave Moses and David and Isaac and Noah and Abraham and many more. He gave me a word and I know it's going to be real. I know it's coming to pass. It's the vision that we've been waiting for. Going back to Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk sorry, Habakkuk 2. He says, write the vision and make it plain on the tablets that he who reads it will run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. When he says it will surely come, it will surely come. God told me it is coming. He said last year it's time. Four months later, I got it. He explained to me in the spirit. He told me 2019 will be the year of preparation and 2020 will be the year the vision comes to fruition. Woo! That's exciting. When God speaks, that's exciting. You can hold on to his word. You can take it to the bank. My God is a God who cannot lie. He told me that. And we've seen so much lining up, so much lining up from the day we dreamed that we would have a food bus. We have a food bus. Two years ago, the food bus became equipped, fully equipped. 
We had it for several years. It was donated to us, but it was sitting there with no equipment, no tires, no brakes. God provided the funding. And now you guys know that food bus has been in full operation, bringing food to the homeless and the hungry. By the grace of God and through our faith in him, we operate everything by faith from week to week. Every week, we trust God for provision. And he brings people to us. He sends people to us. Would you like this? We have this to donate. How can I help? And I can only say that is a God thing. It's because of God and the fact that we are focusing on him, putting him first, trusting him, having faith in him, that he will do through us what only he can do. He is doing this, not me, not my husband, not the board, not the volunteers. But God is doing this because this is his heart for the poor and the homeless to be provided for and loved and ministered to. Can you see it? Can you see Camp Restoration? I want you to see Camp Restoration, the need for Camp Restoration. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about people made in the image of God who are loved and cherished and valued and they have a plan. It's not for them to stay addicted to alcohol and drugs. It's not for them to sleep on the ground worse off than animals. Tomorrow night, Sherry and I are going to downtown Rich Richmond to minister to the homeless people with the sister ministry that we love and support and we partner through. We will be on the streets. We're bringing them some supplies and then we will be on the streets with them feeding people who sleep on the streets of Richmond because there's no place for these people to go. They lay on the sidewalk. They lay on the park benches and it's this way all over the United States. There's no difference. We have them here. We we feed about 45 homeless people every Saturday. People are precious to God. And if we can build humane societies that are fancier than most church buildings, most homes with fancy pens and crates for these dogs, look, we are animal lovers. We want these animals taken care of. But if we can have this for animals, should we not have a place for people? People! These people are precious. They are somebody's child. They're somebody's father or mother or sister or brother. These are people who society cast away. These are people that most people walk right by and you'll see if you watch this tomorrow night, you'll see they walk right by them and they look the other way. Kind of like the story of the Good Samaritan when you had the Sadducees and the Pharisees walking by the man who was hurt and they just turned and walked on the other side and walked right by them, but they didn't want to get involved. That's what people today are doing. They don't want to get involved. That's not my problem. Let someone else take care of them. Well, now is the time we need to do something about this. Amen. This is what Camp Restoration is about. We have been speaking this for seven years. It's coming. It's coming. And sis, I saw that you put this on here earlier. It's coming. Right, that's right. It's coming. But we cannot put this off anymore. Now, I know for me and my husband, we support this ministry monthly. We pour into this ministry monthly. We will take our excess, which is not very much, and we will write checks to put into this ministry monthly to make sure there's fuel, gasoline, kerosene, and diesel to run this food bus. And we know many of you are recurring givers, whether you give $1, and we have some that do who, are, who is on disability. And let me just say something about that. Someone living on disability who only has $15 left when all their bills are paid and they can give one of those dollars to our ministry is precious, precious to us. When I see that come in and sometimes that particular person will give $2 and even sometimes $5 because they value what the ministry is doing and they want to be part of helping other people even though they're receiving help themselves. We have people who give $10 a month on a reoccurring basis through our website. They go in there, when they click on giving, before they submit it, what they will do is they will say, I wanna make this a reoccurring gift. 
And so they give every month $10 a month. We have quite a few that give $10 a month. We have some that give $20 a month on a recurring basis, and we're grateful. That's the substance, that's the core of this. We have some that will give $100 every so often. We have some that's given $500 every so often. And praise God, we've had people that's given over $1,000 every so often. And we're thankful for every single penny. Let me speak about pennies. We had this precious boy, 14 years old, with autism. And he came to me, to the food bus, one Saturday with change in his pocket. And he said, Pastor Wendy, I know you love feeding the homeless and those who are poor, not even recognizing that he was in that category. But he said, I want to help. And he digs in his pocket and he pulls out 44 cents, 44 cents. He said, this is all I have in my piggy bank, but I want to give this to you so I can help you help the people who are homeless and poor. Precious, precious sacrifice. You know, there's luxuries we all have that we enjoy that is not a necessity and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people enjoy going to Starbucks. Some people enjoy, well, whatever. It might be getting your nails done, which I gave up doing a long time ago, or getting your hair colored or permed or fixed. There's so many different things that we do. I'm just asking you guys to be part of this pledge drive, to pray over what you can do what you can give either a one-time gift or what you can give on a reoccurring monthly basis for camp restoration. Now, we do need to build up our expense fund because we've been helping so many more families lately with food. About 25 families a week who don't have food. And just this last week alone, just to give you an idea, we have requests that comes through our Facebook page. I get phone calls. I get text messages and I get messages from Messenger to protect the individual's privacy. I won't give their name. But just this week since Sunday, today's only Wednesday, we had a person who lives in Gloucester losing their place to live and they're looking for affordable low-income housing. I have another person who is in Gloucester now. A person said they're homeless and they're starving to death right here in Gloucester County. Now we will get them food tomorrow. That's a new message. I have another person who is a parent, a single parent who lost their home. They have no food, they're facing surgery, they're out of work until they're recovered from their surgery and they need help right here in Gloucester County. I have another family of five, three children, husband and wife, a working family, very low income. They just are in the process of losing their place that they've been renting. They've been renting for $400 a month and they need a place to find ASAP before the end of this month. Well, today's the 28th of August. They're frightened and they don't know what they're gonna do and they're turning to us for help. Then we have a family in Matthews who's living in a camper where their roof is leaking. They have no working septic, so they have no plumbing, no, um, bathroom facility, so to speak, and they are with medical issues and they need help. We have another single person living in Hayes in a camper, a very tiny, tiny camper with no electricity, no running water, no plumbing, and no job, no transportation. So we try to get food to her once a week so she won't die where she's at, right here in Gloucester County. I have another family in Hayes whose house is falling apart. Um, they have medical issues, they don't have food, they don't have water that week. This is just this week since Sunday. I have another person who reached out needing help with housing. The message was, can you help me? I need help with housing, I have nowhere to live. I have another person just this week who said, I need help with a place to live. I have someone else who said, I'm hungry, I have no food, and I have no transportation. Can you bring food to me? And the last one, just this week, this is the 12th person. I'm short $200 to pay my rent, and if I don't get it, I'm going to be homeless and I'm afraid. People, this is just some of what we have. People reaching out to us who is 
in desperate need for help. A lot, a lot of times I will have people contact us who went to their church for help. And their church said, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Now, I don't know the story behind that. It could be the church had helped them one too many times and they don't want to enable them because none of us want to enable. I'm not judging the church. We are one. I'm just saying that they were turned away and they were hurt. I've had people who've contacted us who other churches had said, here, here's the phone number to helping the homeless. Call them and see if they can help you. Some of these churches that are referring people to us are not supporting our ministry. They're sending people that go to them to us to help. Most of our funding, and our treasurer is watching right now, she can attest to this, most of our funding goes to cover our legal insurance to run the food bus and the officers and directors in our general liability insurance, which is necessary to run this ministry and also for the food and the fuel to run this food bus ministry week after week. That's it. There's a separate fund that's completely opposite of our expense and operational account that we call Camp Restoration Fund. As money is donated specifically to Camp Restoration, that money is deposited in Camp Restoration Fund. That money does not go to the operational expenses, but for the vision to come to fruition. So the day that comes that we can purchase or receive a donation of land, we can do it debt free. So the body of Christ is spread out all over. We have people who support us and who partner with us and are part of our restoration church in Ohio, Texas, California, and Pennsylvania. Okay. We have, like I said, and I'm just bragging on what God is doing, not on me. As you can see, we have 3,400 people on this page following us. We have about 2,000 people who watch our live stream sermons every week. That's our church. We're part of the body of Christ. So we want to get the word out to people who need the word, to need to, need to be encouraged, need to be strengthened spiritually. But now I'm calling out to you and I'm asking you, please pray over what you can commit to on a week, sorry, not weekly, but a monthly basis. Whatever amount, nothing will be too small. We will be so appreciative if you would just be part of partnering with us for Camp Restoration to come. We need your donation. Let me see if I can clear this out so I can see you. Um, we need you to be part of what God is doing so we can get to the next stage of camp restoration. So there's different ways you can do that because we do need some money to come in to get our expense account risen back up. We are going to the food bank this coming Tuesday. Our breakfast bag supplies are dwindling down to the bare minimum. The last bit of our box cereals I gave out today to part of our breakfast bag team. We're so thankful for you, Miss Joan. We're thankful for you, Michelle and Madison and Kim with you and your daughter and your son. We're thankful for you who worked to put those cereals together. And we're thankful for Lynette and her team, for all of you who packaged the breakfast bags together. But if we don't have the ingredients to go in the breakfast bags, we don't have breakfast bags to fill, and then we won't have breakfast bags to give out every Saturday. So if you would like to make a donation strictly for the food bus, make sure if you're writing a check that you put on the check food bus. Or if you go on our website, which is www.helpingthehomelessministry.com, and after this message is over, I will add it to the link below us so you'll you don't have to remember that, okay? But helpingthehomelessministry.com. If you go to the website and you click on the link that says giving, when you click that, it will carry you over to the PayPal where you can submit a payment with your debit card or credit card. Before you submit it, there's a place that you can add a message. And that's where you would put, if you want your giving to be for the food bus, you would please you would put on there, please use for food bus. If you want your giving to be part of camp restoration, that's what it automatically defaults to. 
So if you don't say food bus, it's going to go to camp restoration. If you want to be partners, monthly partners, oh, we're praying for you to become a monthly partner, to share in what God is doing, all the salvations and the people's lives that are being restored and people that's being delivered. You can be part of that by helping fund this ministry. Please pray. If you go to the same website and you click on giving, and you would submit it before you click on submit after you enter your information. They ask you, would you like to make this a reoccurring gift? That's where you would say yes or no. If you say yes, then however much you give is what will come out on a monthly basis automatically. Can you imagine? There's 3,400 people on this page. If everyone gave $1 a month, that's $3,400. Can you imagine the funding that we could get if you were able to give five or ten dollars a month? I'm not asking you, maybe I should, maybe I should be that bold, but I'm not asking you to give your life savings. I'm asking you to partner with many of the rest of the body of Christ so we can see that fund for camp restoration increase. So when the right place comes, we don't have to pass it by for not having the money to receive it, to buy it, and then to run it. Now we'll share more about the business plan, maybe the next live broadcast I do for helping the homeless. We'll share more about that. But for now, I'm asking you to pray about being part of this pledge drive and being part of funding camp restoration and the expense account for helping the homeless. You know, being a partner, there's a spiritual blessing that comes when we give to the least of these. It's as though we're giving unto Jesus himself. And when we get to be part of sowing into somebody else's salvation and helping their lives be changed, that has eternal value. There's things we can spend our money on today that will not last. If I go out to eat and I put that food in my body, it's not gonna last, it's gone instantly. And I need to eat and you need to eat. Just like this house that I'm sitting on is not gonna last forever. I'm talking about eternal value of people being saved whose lives are being changed for Jesus Christ. You know, the next Billy Graham might be one of the ones we reach through Camp Restoration. That's amazing. There's so many people who have so much gifting in them, they just haven't identified it yet. There are treasures in the rough, diamonds in the rough, amen? But the Bible says where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. And when we put first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added unto us. If we sow sparingly, we will reap sparingly. But if we sow mightily, I can't think of the rest of the word, then we will reap mightily. If we sow big, we're going to sow big. Whatever we sow, we're going to reap. And I want to sow into the lives of people more than anything else. You know, all these material things, they're just things. They're not going to last forever. I can't take them with me to heaven, and neither can you. But we can take people to heaven. And that's where Jesus, that's who he died for. He died for me, and he died for you, and he died for the least of these. He died for those that society walks by. So will you join me in this pledge drive? My husband and I, we give monthly and sometimes more than once a month. And I know that is that could be public knowledge because our, our reports are public. I'm not doing that to brag, but I would not ask anyone to give if I don't support it myself with my husband. We are givers and we support this ministry financially every single month. We always have since its inception. So I ask you before I close to look and see before the Lord, ask him, what can I do? What can I give monthly? What's in my budget? I don't want you to take away from your tithe and your offering at your own church. I don't, I'm not asking you to do that. If you're a member of a local church, you continue to support your local church. Please don't take away from that. But if you believe that we are doing God's work and you want to be part of that and you want to see camp restoration come, pray over how much the Lord wants you to give and then become a partner with us and see what God does. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how God's going to use you to help us do what we're called to do. It's going to be beautiful. So thank you all for joining in.
thank you that you're in support of us. I thank you all for those who are prayer partners with us, who pray for us and share our messages and share our posts and who donate their time to serve on the food bus with us. I thank you all for those who donate items that we need, who get their children involved, get their youth groups involved. That is so beautiful. It is the body of Christ coming together. And it's not about any specific location, but it's about God's people coming together for one purpose, in unity, being the body of Christ, loving the least of these in our communities, seeing lives changed. That's what God is doing through this ministry. And if you're a part of this, it's your ministry too. It doesn't matter what church you go to. We are all part of the church of Christ, the body of Christ. So as we bear one another's burdens, as we sacrifice, you know, when we give, if it doesn't hurt a little, it's not a true sacrifice. We have to be willing to give something up when we sacrifice. That's what giving really is all about. So pray over what your part will be. Pray over what amount of pledge you would like to make. And then let me know if you're not sure how to find the website. I will post the address here later. You can also write checks payable to Helping the Homeless and you can mail them to our address, 7745 Kelly Avenue, Gloucester. And the zip code is 23061. If you would rather give by check, that's always welcome. But just be part of what God's doing. And like I said, there's 3,400 people plus on this page. If everyone gave $1, that's $3,400 a month. Can you imagine how much more if people pledge more than that? That we can gather together and put into Camp Restoration Fund so we can see Camp Restoration come. I'm so excited about that. I see it. I've been seeing it from the very beginning because God told me it's coming. He gave me the vision. The vision never changed, never left. It is still just as strong. But the neat thing is that we're even closer to it than we were before. Seven years ago. But it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. In Jesus' name. I'm so, so thankful to each one of you. Thank you so much for being part of helping the homeless, for Restoration Church, for loving people like God does. I hope that this has blessed you tonight, and I just thank you for being part of what God is doing. Love y'all. Good night for now.